And welcome to Eugene, Oregon, Saturday night at Autzen Stadium. It is windy, it is wet, it's Oregon Ducks football. And it's this kind of weather. The wind right now is going to be a much more significant factor than the rain, at least in the early part of this Saturday night, as the Oregon Ducks host the California Golden Bears to begin the Pac-12 football season. Welcome with Glenn Parker, Drea Avem, Ted Robinson. We're glad to be here. It's a thrill. It's a great, one of the great venues in, in college football. The students are all here ready to start class on Monday. So, Glenn, I guess the question becomes, can the weather tonight do what no team has been able to do against the Oregon offense. I doubt it. I think that the weather is going to play a part. Obviously, the rain is coming down, but more of the wind than anything. But it really, these guys are all used to it. They've they played in it. They're ready. I think Cal might have some issues, but Oregon is not going to have any issues with this little bit of rain. They're ducks. Well, it's a new coach, but old results for Oregon. Very familiar with this incredible offense. Yeah, what they're able to do, the explosive plays, and you see how quickly they score so often. Big gains all the time, always got you on your heels, and so far, no turnovers. That's huge for this offense. And that plays right into what Cal. Cal has played three games at home. We know they can throw the ball. We know they can score. What can they do tonight to try to counter that offense? Well, they've got to keep the ball in their hands, number one. They've got to keep it away from Oregon. So the small, short passing game comes into play. But they've got to steal some possessions. They've got to get turnovers. They're going to have to take some chances defensively so that they can get those possessions back because we know they're not going to keep up scoring with Oregon every time. Yeah. So it is tonight a test. It's a test for California's freshman quarterback. Jared Goff, his first road game. What better atmosphere to have? The students are here, they're on hand, and they are ready to watch two of the nation's premier offensive players, quarterback and running back, D. Lux. Pac-12 football brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Bold flavor, 10 calories. And by State Farm, for auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. It is one of college football's great venues under the bright lights. Despite the weather, the place will be full tonight. It is Cal's first road game, the first for Sonny Dykes as the Golden Bears head coach. And just a few moments ago, we were allowed to listen in to his final words to his team. Okay, hey, this is all about us. Okay, this is all about how we play. It's all about how we handle the good things, the bad things, the flow of the game, okay? Very important tonight. Don't get caught up in the atmosphere. Don't get caught up in the weather. Don't get caught up in anything. Only thing you got to worry about is doing your job. Do it over and over and over. Keep doing it for 60 minutes, okay? Now, Sonny Dykes knows the venue. He was an assistant at Arizona for some time before he went to be the head coach of Louisiana Tech. And he already made an interesting decision here. California won the coin toss and deferred. I find that surprising, Glenn. I would have thought. I, I agree with you. Chance with Oregon, you want the ball first. You want the ball first. You want to hold serve. That's what I would agree with you. But he must feel confident. He must want to get his defense out on the field and into the rhythm, and maybe let uh, Jared Goff feel the the, the the loud and the crowd for a little bit before he's asked to get out there. All right, let's take a look at our edge of the game. Brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Well, uh, California's got to find a way to steal those possessions. Offensively, defensively, on down, special teams, however they do it. And the Ducks, hey, they got to grind it out at that fast pace that they always do. It's a basic offense. Inside zone read, outside zone read, and they're very, very physical. A lot more so than most teams realize. Well, they are. <laughs> they live by a creed here that it never rains at Autzen Stadium. <laughs> and they're... Uh, and it's just a testament to what this program has become. The pride that the state of Oregon takes in this football program. And the place just about full as we get ready to kick it off. And the great talent of DeAnthony Thomas is the deep man. California wearing gray-based jerseys for their first road game of the year. D'Amato's kick very short, but Thomas will run it from the 15. He is, in recent years, I can't think of too many other weapons like that, that every time he touches the ball, you think he's going to score. You're absolutely right, but he does remind you of someone else that you remember you were telling me about. 
I, 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 well, wow, that's that's a much more significant issue right now for Oregon. De'Anthony Thomas feeling uh, the result of the tackle. Oh, there. See that right ankle? I would assume that's what he's holding. Yeah. And it looked like a slip on the turf. So De'Anthony Thomas, who I a long time ago had a chance to call the games of Rocket Ismail in college. That was the last guy I can remember that just he could outrun everybody. And every time he touched the ball, he thought he could score. So Oregon to work. Good drive start, 42-yard line. Marcus Mariota. Put ball on the flat, and it's incomplete. Byron Marshall now starts the game. This is Byron Marshall's second year at Oregon. And he'll start the game as the running back with the injury to Thomas. Right away, because of the rain, they wanted to get Marcus Mariota throwing the ball. Make it comfortable soon. And now we'll run on the second play, and Marshall drops the ball, and it's going to be all over the place. The wet football already becomes a significant issue. Cal looked like they had it twice, and it ended up in the hands of Colt Lyurla. Well, outside zone read, base play. Get the ball in the hands of the running back, get him outside. He cuts back. Good job of putting a hand on the ball for Cal. That's what we talk about stealing possessions, but they got to come up with that. Byron Marshall has had the ball twice and dropped it twice. Third and two. And they'll run a little pitch option to Marshall with a lot of space. And Marshall drops it for the third time, and it goes out of bounds. This is. You talk about the triple play of Lucky Charms. Three touches, three drops. And how patient will Mark Humphreys be with him now? Three drops in three tries. You wonder how much longer he's going to go with him. And the other, the other Lucky Charm part of this, Oregon has not turned the ball over yet this year. And um, remarkably, they did not turn it over in any of, well, the first play was a pass play, but the last two plays, fumbles. This one going out of bounds. It's marked at the 34. First year head coach, an Oregonian. And that's a special thing for Mark Helfrich to be the head coach here. Mariota. Look at the blocking outside. Another staple of the Oregon offense. How their wide receivers block for the speed players. And then how they all believe that every touchdown is their touchdown. It's just, you know, and that goes back to the old offensive line mentality. If I have a block that gets you into the end zone, that's my touchdown. All those wide receivers do the same thing. Mariota just ran for 20. He's been averaging 21 in run this year on read option plays. He hit his average just about. And there he had a touchdown, but he threw it behind Huff. The one bubble in Mariota early this year is his completion percentage. It is dipped from a fabulous first season, 68%. One of the things Mark Helfrich told us right away when we asked him yesterday was what we saw in the first down play, dropped balls. But that one, that was really on Marcus. He had a touchdown. Well, Byron Marshall has a touchdown. And this time he holds the ball all the way. Continues another trend. One minute, 32 seconds to score. Motion in the backfield confuses the secondary, and that's where they get beat because Oregon's offensive line is going to put a hat on a hat. That's what they do. They are big, strong, good physical linemen. That's a really well-designed play. We saw Kyrie Fort was the one Cal linebacker that had a chance to plug that hole, and he got blocked. And Byron Marshall was untouched. Well, if you've been watching football today, you've seen this. It is a day when there are four Pac-12 games in the Pacific Northwest, and all four being affected by a pretty massive rain pattern. Well, a lot of water. It's a pretty good snap. He just doesn't hold it down, and there might be one stolen possession. for Oregon to score six plays, 58 yards. And now Oregon, in this, and it really wasn't raining like this until about half an hour before kickoff. And the rain swirling, big winds, and
kickoffs. We already saw the first kickoff in which Anthony Thomas got hurt. Kickoffs will be affected by the wind. I would fathom we're not going to see anything go all that deep. I think that very first kickoff, as you said, was was we'd have to factor that in. And it's such a swirling wind, it, it's hard. We were watching yeah. it all pregame. Very hard to figure out where it's coming from. Matt Wogan kicks for Oregon. Kalfani Muhammad is the deep return man for California. That's a pretty good belt. And that will drive Muhammad back in the end zone and force a touchback. And let's look at our difference makers. Brought to you by Esurance. Well, you, you look at the wideouts for Cal. Harper and Treggs, they've got to get deep. They've got to get open and help the quarterback. And defensively for the Ducks, Taylor Hart up front. Really an unrecognized player, but he can get some pressure and he can stop the run. And Ifo Ekpre Olamu, he was a machine last year. This kid is something special out there. When they get pressure on the quarterback, he plays center field well on, on passes thrown out there to him. So Jared Goff, who has put up the kind of numbers that this offensive style does allow you to, he's done it beautifully in his first three games all at home. Two of them against Big Ten competition. Now after the touchback from the 25, a quick ball for a completion. And that'll be a six-yard gain to Chris Harper. A lot of what Cal does, that short little pitch and toss. But they do get down the field. It's not all behind the line of scrimmage like so many teams. As you see right there. Bryce Treggs at the bottom of your picture against Ekpre Olamu. Now a little quick ball out in the flat. That's a forward pass to Muhammad incomplete. Well, that's the second drop ball we've seen on swing or bubble type passes where he's the running back or receiver has to look back while running one direction and kind of turn his body so I'm wondering if the rain and all of that together are already seeing seeing some sort of effect on these guys crowd noise shouldn't impact california they're a team like oregon they signal plays in from the side cards and pictures etc so Bob lost the ball that is a ruled a live ball that has not rolled a forward pass. And the recovery is Oregon. Jack Folliard is our referee tonight, did not blow a whistle, so that was a live ball. Yeah, the ball just slips right out of his hand. And he brings it back, the ball flies. That's probably a little inexperienced young guy in the rain. Just lost the handle. Oseko Lacombo of Oregon recovers the fumble. And now the Ducks will race right back. And rather than having Oregon on their first, two of their first three plays, California had a chance to steal a possession. Instead, they have one stolen from them. And Oregon now has a chance to put that Damaging early debt that they do just about every week to teams. Byron Marshall alongside Mariota. And that ball again was a touchdown. If it had been thrown to Huff up in the air, Huff was unable to bring it down. Damari Drew, young player for California, had to step into a big hole. Avery Sebastian, veteran safety man out for the year with an injury for the Bears. Now we get a jump up front and a push of the center, Rosu. DeAndre Coleman came flying across. Five yard penalty, second down. All right, our insurance difference makers with Morgan on offense. Well, uh, Cole Lyrela, we saw him already. He's made a difference. He recovered a fumble. Hieronymus Grasu, the center, they pull him. He's a great athlete. And defensively, DeAndre Coleman, the nose that just jumped. Got himself in a little trouble. So now a quick throw on that little smoke route in space. And the ball taken by Braylon Addison for Oregon. Gets it down close to the 15. Addison is a, he's an emerging receiver here. He, we saw him last year. He, he had his baptism, but they think this is a guy that could become a big playmaker for them. 90% of the time, I, I, it, it, they run some sort of fake handoff. Ooh. Nice job by the defense getting there, but you'll notice Oregon. They almost every play, if there's a back in the backfield, it is a fake handoff if they're going to pass. Even if the offensive line pass protects. 
It's simply to get guys looking in the backfield. You see with Sonny Dykes and his staff, they thought that was a backwards throw that went out of bounds would be marked at the spot the ball went out. But the officials ruled on the field it was a forward pass and incomplete. Marshall hit, drops it again. And in the dive for the ball this time, can California come away with it? Or did, did Grasso come out? Grasso got down there and got the ball? I believe he did. That's amazing. Three fumbles already by Oregon and none lost. Well, the thing about this, did he actually, was it a fumble? Did he have, he comes out of the backfield, option route. Brad just sits off. down right there. For one play. So whether it was a fumble or not, it's another deal, but Ronis Grasso getting downfield, making a play. That's what big fellas are supposed to do. Yeah. Chase the ball. Wow. Moala of the Bears looked like he had it. That was ruled a completed pass. They spotted the ball to recovery at the 12-yard line. So it'll be third down and eight. The question now becomes, do, do you change what plays you're calling when you're seeing what trouble people, and especially Marshall, is having holding the ball? Mariota threw that one into a, a bracket. And leaping up was Stephen McClure to deflect that out. Now we get a flag late. McCain of Cal, I believe, and Jake Fisher, the right tackle for Oregon, were, were kind of connected going out of bounds on the rollout. After the play, personal foul on the offense, number 75. That's a 15 yard penalty. Fourth down. Well, they get the what big fella. They got Jake Fisher. So Fisher and Chris McCain got tangled in pursuing Mariota on the rollout. Now, if you're Oregon, this is not a night for field goal kickers. Jim Kelly set a, an amazing standard here of going forward on fourth down. Do so you expect Oregon to do it again? But. They, they pretty much have to hit a home run here. Well, they're, they're capable of it. We've yes, seen that much. The line of scrimmage will be the 27 and a half. They can get a first down just inside the four. But in essence, this plays like fourth and goal. A little screen. And that's broken up nicely by California. Marshall could not get out. Dan Camparelli got through there to break that up and make a really good play and drop Marshall. So California avoids giving up points on their turnover. To Autzen Stadium, and I've been observing DeAnthony Thomas. He was sitting on the sideline with his helmet off, talking to his teammates, but he just walked past me and limped off the field. So we will keep our eye on that and keep everybody posted as much as we can as to his status for the rest of the game, guys. I think uh, D'Anthony Thomas, that looks to be a pretty plain picture of his status. I think we need to keep an eye on Drea's status tonight. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a, a weather station hurricane report, didn't it? Well, uh, California now trying to run the ball with Brendan Bigelow. This uh, actually is uh, giving credence to the weather forecasts. They're pretty much spot on. This is the forecast yesterday, and they thought the, the toughest part of this storm was going to hit Eugene right around kickoff tonight. And they're exactly right. This is by far the worst weather we've had at all today. And the Willamette Valley as Bigelow catches a pass in the right flat for a first down. Well, Bigelow twice. He still is not the explosive player that he was. He's got to trust himself that he's back from the injuries that he had. They need him to break out. Stop on a handoff. Bigelow. The back trying to come back from injury to hopefully fill something of a role for Cal like the Anthony Thomas does for Oregon. There the right ankle. That appeared to be the the moment that may finish him for the night. Bigelow drops the ball. Well the weather Obviously, is completely destroying the ability of these talented players to play the game the right way. 
Rodney Hardrick on the recovery for Oregon. Bigelow has only one point of pressure. That ball has to be held against his chest. Three points, obviously made famous by Tiki Barber and the troubles he had, but he had it away from his body. It's moist, it's wet out there, it's windy, and one arm hits it, and out it flies. Do you, and this weather, Glenn, you played in Buffalo for a few years, so I assume you have some knowledge with this. Do you wrap the ball? I mean, if you're running, do you wrap with two arms? If you can, absolutely. The possession of the football in a game like this is paramount. So Oregon, third possession, the second in a row they've taken over in Cal territory. And look at Marshall, look at Marshall carry the ball. Did you see that? And after dropping it four times? And you see what, what right. after the fumbles, yeah. Oregon comes out, two tight ends, runs inside zone read. Right back to it. Marshall again takes it down. That's going to be a first down gain to the Cal 22. And these aren't, the, those last two plays aren't even uh, reads. They're just inside zone. There is no read going on. And they've decided we're going to have ball safety and we're going to grind you and then take that shot. Yeah, the other thing I, I would think, Glenn, on the sideline, if you're a coach on either side right now, you have to think end zone. That you can't think field goal. I mean, field goals are not going to beat Oregon anyway. That's correct. But even if you're on the Oregon side here, it's pretty difficult to think about kicking a field goal. Absolutely. You've got to think about how do I got four downs to get in every time. That's what your the mindset probably has to become, is you're correct. This wind and this rain are certainly going to hit, uh, hinder the, the field goals. Mariota, and he handed the ball off, but the back slipped, knee hit the ground, so he was down. That's uh, Josh Huff on the carry. Almost looked like there was and miscommunication, like he wanted to pull it and run the option. And Huff had the ball, had contact with the ball, and his knee hit the ground, so the officials blew that play dead. Third down and six for Oregon. to Huff and Space. Look at the block by Keenan Lowe. Keenan Lowe stood up his man, and that opened the alleyway for Josh Huff to score the Oregon touchdown. Well, both outside, right out here, look at these blocks. Keenan Lowe standing up, Byron Marshall with a big cut. That frees Huff for the score. Hey, wide receivers, that's their touchdown as much as it is Huff's. And he just he just took Cameron Jackson out, did not allow the defender a chance to stop the play. And Josh Huff finally gets the touchdown. Two others earlier that didn't happen. And now Oregon does execute the snap cleanly. And it is the extra point kicked for Oregon's 13th. Well, Marcus Mariota gets him there. Get it out to Huff. Great blocking in front. Wide receivers doing their job. Oregon on the board again. Well, they tell you here it never rains in Austin, Glenn. Does that does that cover monsoons? <laughs> yeah, this is this goes beyond rain in my experience. <laughs> I live in the desert. It is uh it's rough, and as I said, it was not nearly this uh this difficult a day at all in Eugene. It, didn't rain very much during the day. There was wind and teams warmed up without much rain. And uh, right around 15 minutes or so before kickoff, this started. And you can see that they're going to have to have somebody hold the ball, I believe, for Matt Wogan to kick off for Oregon. One of the other interesting things that Chip Kelly would talk about when he was here, Mark Helford says the same thing, is that yeah, they Oregon, they don't practice outdoors when this stuff happens. They practice indoors. They want to have an efficient practice. That's right. Great right, to kick off here. This will be Kalfani Muhammad again from the one-yard line. Muhammad, a little crease on the right side of the return lane, and he pushes it out across the 25. There was a flag down.
Offside on the kicking team, number 86. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. That's a smart uh, acceptance of the penalty if you're Sonny Dykes. You don't want to have to go through receiving a kick again. Well, quite a introduction to road Pac-12 football for Jared Goff, who grew up in Marin County. Dad played baseball at Cal. He's a major league player. Goff is sacked. That is a live ball. It is a strip sack fumble, and it is recovered by Oregon. I believe. Yes, it is. There's the official signal. And it's getting a little chippy in there. Pressure comes from both sides. He gets sandwiched. A blitz in the B gap. DeForest Buckner. And boy, he had nowhere to go. One of the things you talk about with the way Cal sets, the offensive linemen set straight back. They, they do some cutting to get the hands down, but if they miss, and you've taken away their rhythm in the passing game, you can get those sacks. So, Glenn, let me ask you. Oregon has fumbled three times, lost none. Cal has fumbled three times, lost three. Do we take anything about that? Yeah, we, we can look at this, the scoreboard and see what we take away, no. as well as the hustle <laughs> of the Ducks when the ball's on the ground to get there. That was my, well, Mariota's going to hold the ball here and take a sack. My question was going to be that. Is that luck? No, there is, there is no such thing as luck on that field. Okay. They're trained when the, when the ball is down the field to hustle after it. And if the ball pops out, you're there to get it. That's coaching. And after the sack for California's Kyle Cragen on the first down play, a run for a short gain, and now Oregon will have a long third. You know, the coaches always like to say, you are what you repeatedly do. So if in practice you're always hustling down the field to cover on passes, you're going to do it in the game, and you're going to be where, be there when the ball pops out. Cal now in their fourth game. That was their fourth team sack of the year. And it took Oregon out of schedule here. They're going to throw a backwards ball, which is live. And that was going to be a pass, I believe, by Allison. Instead, he turns it into a run. That's going to be close to a first down. He's going to be marked about a yard short. So a backwards throw to Addison. Let's see, is he going to throw this? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's designed. But the smart thing, he decides to run and not throw the ball up for grabs. So Oregon will go here on fourth down. And Mariota throws it to Loyola for a touchdown. That's Daryl Hawkins' correction. Daryl Hawkins on the catch for the Oregon score. And again, great blocking at the top of your screen. Huff with the cut. Bradshaw with the cut. Oh, excuse me, Byron Marshall with the cut. You get out, you get people's feet off the ground, their hands are down, they can't recover. It's just too much. And that's a touchdown for Oregon, and it comes, again, at cost for Cal, because this block by Josh Huff, he goes low. Takes the legs out, and the Cal defender is not, this is Cameron Jackson, I believe, has not gotten up. I think you're right. Yes. You saw him, you could see the replay clearly reaching for his left knee. And California, which has been riddled by injury early in the year, their defense struggled last season, and now they've been hurt. They've got several. Veteran players, Nick Forbes, who they were hoping was going to be back to play tonight, a linebacker. He's not. Avery Sebastian is out. And, and stress that the block by, by Huff was very clean and legal. This was, he's blocking away from the ball, below the waist. He's allowed. From the front. From the front. Ten and two, they like to say. It's a good, clean, legal block. Unfortunately, something happened, and now yes. Cameron Jackson is... Is, is taken but down. Glenn, and, and we, if you're following football, if you love college football or pro football or both, you're hearing a lot about it this year is that conversation about how players don't like the low block. Right. Because of this, the, the potential of this happening. Well, like players say, a, a concussion or, or some type of injury like that, you're back in a week or so. But if you get hurt, you, you have severe injuries when you go low. And that's what players are afraid of. 
Sonny Dykes is out on the field and he's talking to Jack Follier, the referee. I obviously don't know what, but it's a painful moment for California because here's another starting player, Cameron Jackson, a junior from Poly High in Long Beach. That being helped off with what appears to be a, an injury of significance. Well, it's been an there's been a lot happening in the first just shy of eight minutes of this game. We've had six fumbles, three touchdowns. And Oregon has already possessed the ball four times. We're not even eight minutes into the game. California has only run eight plays from scrimmage, and they're down 20 to nothing to Oregon. All right, let's uh, join Ashley Adamson now in our Pac-12 Network studio for a game break fueled by Gatorade. Ted, take you out to CenturyLink Field in Seattle, Stanford, Washington State, second quarter. Kevin Hogan finds Devin Kajust. He burns a secondary, a 33-yard touchdown. Kajust having himself a night so far. He and Hogan hooked up for a 57-yard touchdown earlier. Right now, Stanford up 17-3. All right, Ashley, thanks. And obviously, we can't see that. I assume the weather is not great in Seattle. It sure wasn't during the uh, UW-U of A game. That was played a few hours ago in Seattle. It is a strange day. Four games in the Pacific Northwest on the same day for the Pac-12. Two of them in the city of Seattle. Corvallis earlier today, which you saw here on Pac-12 Networks. And tonight here in Eugene, where Mark Helfrich was going up and down the sideline. And I was thinking just like Marv Levy probably did in Buffalo, like Bud Grant used to do in Minnesota, when this is your home field and it's your home weather, you embrace it. Because you understand the other team generally doesn't like it. Muhammad downs that ball in the end zone. Well, here's here's the problems for Cal. No handle on the ball. It's wet. It's slippery. But you can't let that get in your mind. You got to play. And Bigelow not quite holding the ball tight. Not grasping it the correct way. And then the sack. You got to have ball security. If you're going to come into a place like Otson and you're going to get a big win, it's got to mean more to you. You got to be able to hold that ball. But you're absolutely right. Like. Mark Levy, we talk about embracing that weather, Ted. We never practiced in that bubble. It was always out. You did practice outdoors. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it, gonna, it really started with the great Viking teams. As Daniel Lasko had a good game rushing in the second half of Cal's game with Ohio State two weeks ago. But, uh, you know, that's where it really started, with the outdoors in Minnesota back in the 60s and 70s. I, I think we didn't do it because Mark was afraid of the blow-up bubble. <laughs> I think that's what it was. <laughs> California trying to secure things here, and Lasko gets outside, turns the left edge, and runs for a first down. And California would love nothing more here than to just settle down, let Jared Goff get into the game a little bit. And of course, the defense right now is begging for that too. Oregon has already run 21 plays. Got loses it. He can throw it again. He loses it a second time. Now they're ruling that incomplete. He had Darius Powell wide open down the right. field, and that's where he wanted to go. This was the play prior. See, zone concept, fake the pass. That's what Cal likes to do on many of their runs. They'll fake like they're passing after the fact. Well, the Cal coaches kept telling us to see what they're trying to do here to keep the footballs playable. So again, Goff's previous play was ruled as an incomplete pass. Did Lasko lose that ball? Yeah. Apparently he did. Well, it sure looked like it. And Oregon has it again. An utter nightmare. And that was. I believe that was Kalfani Muhammad, my correction, who carried that ball. And he's shaken up. And Muhammad, yes, Muhammad is coming off the field. He's been hurt on this tackle. Hard to see if his knee was down from that angle or not. I know that's what they're going to complain. It looks like Muhammad's pleading his case right now that he. They're not, they're not going to look at it. 
Sonny Dykes and the California Bears are desperately looking for the emergency break here. Because this is careening downhill in a hurry. Huff in space. Another terrific block. Well, Keenan Lowe, like most wide receivers, they don't come to a school like Oregon thinking, I'm going to be a great blocker. He's thrown two gems here in the first quarter. Yeah, he's been great out on the perimeter. S Stephen McClure told us they have th three different tempos, and they're all faster than the last one. I think we're seeing that. Byron Marshall inside. Uh, Keenan Lowe, number seven, top of your screen. Look at him stalk. He stalks, moves his feet, hands inside. Boy, a lot of offensive tackles would like to block that well. That is Joel Willis, who was blocked in that play for California. Willis is now playing at that corner spot, replacing Cameron Jackson. And Marshall drives it down to about the 10, maybe just inside. And that's an attitude play by Oregon. Inside, zone read. But that means every offensive lineman's blocking zone to the left, and the read is off to the right end, and they just want to punish you and grind you a little bit. This offensive line is very good. Mariota holding it. He's got nowhere to throw. He was hoping that Lowe could get some separation in the end zone. Couldn't. There's a flag on the play. They had movement on the end of the line of scrimmage, so it would have gone for not anyways, I believe. Kyrie Fort ran Mariota out of bounds. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the background. In the backfield. California, I'm assuming, declines that penalty, which would make it fourth down. And I would assume, like you said, that Oregon probably going to go for it. So they... Yeah, Cal, is Sonny Dykes going to turn down the penalty? I mean, Oregon can score from anywhere. Again, you just, why give them an extra chance? So it'll be fourth down. They can get a first at the five. Plenty of uh, time on the play clock. Looking to the sideline where there are about four people signaling plays. Three receiver bunch to the right. And that doesn't start cleanly. And Oregon this time will lose five, no choice. Prior to the snap, full start, offense number 64. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. Tyler Johnstone, the left tackle there, so now fourth down will come from the 14-yard line. It'll be fourth and nine. Tyler Johnson, the backside tackle on that play because they were running to the right, so he had a long cutoff, so he was in an anx anxious and a big hurry to get over there. And trying to let Lowe make a play, but he's out of bounds. Good cover there by Willis of Cal. A little misdirection in the backfield to get the safeties biting up. As you said, Willis, nice job, runs with him. Ball was out of bounds. A good job stepping in, get, doing what he's asked to do, what he wants to do. As a, you know, as a, you're a backup, you're always wanting to be the guy. He gets the chance and he makes a play. So Cal's defense holds again. Oregon will take over. Excuse me, Cal's offense will take over. Just trying to see if they can execute here. Goff. Too high off the field intended for Richard Rodgers. They had him open on the crossing route off the play action and just put it too far over his head. Goff's got to settle himself down and, and get become accurate if they're going to have a chance. And there again could be the impact of the night. That ball doesn't come out of Goff's hands as cleanly as he'd like. Crowd starting to make their presence felt as Goff trying to throw underneath. Misfire there in what looked like a little bit of a read route intended for Chris Harper. Going back to that offensive line, 
the way they drop into their sets, they backpedal. And now that resets the line of scrimmage, but if you can get their wide receivers off rhythm so that Goff can't throw when he wants to, pressure mounts quickly because of those sets. Daniel Lasko in as the running back. Set up a screen for him, and that's taken apart by Oregon's Terrence Mitchell. Two strong corners here at Oregon. And Mitchell and Ekpre Olamu. And the Oregon defense again will get off the field. The Cal coaches were all, all of them yesterday that we spoke to kept saying how much Jared Goff loves to play. He just loves playing the game. Loves competing. Leininger to punt it, just got that away. Running up is Addison on a tough night. He'll be fair catching the ball, and a flag is thrown for a potential interference with the fair catch. That looked like Jalen Jefferson, linebacker, just got too close. He's pleading, saying he was pushed from behind, but That's it didn't look like it. That's what the conference will be about. Was he pushed into the returner? Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team number seven. That's a 15 yard penalty, first down. And so the pylon continues. Oregon gets another great drive start. Yeah, he, he's got to give that halo. He doesn't do it. The best of intentions doesn't matter if you're too close to the man who's trying to catch that punt. So Oregon from the Cal 38. And the entire first quarter has been played at this end of the field. Addison streaking, and boy, that one had a look like it might go. And Joel Willis saved for California. And Keenan Lowe again on the perimeter, blocking on the uh, on the edge. You know, they, what do they do? So much of what they do stems from their inside zone run. They start with that. Then they have an inside zone run with the read to the pass, just like you saw there. Big chunks of yardage. Byron Marshall spins off one, spins off two, and then is finally taken down by Viliami Mawala of California. Well, here's the previous play, and Mariota on this option decides to throw it. Look at the guys out there, and there he is, Keenan Lowe. Arms inside, getting a block. That's an extra three yards because your wide receiver is doing the right thing. And now Mariota goes for the post again and misses Addison. Inside the five to Marie Drew on the cover for Cal. Just a little too much on this ball. But, but the ball's coming out of his hand pretty good. He's throwing that ball with a little, little fire on it. Byron Marshall alongside Mariota. And Byron Marshall will take it home for the fourth Oregon touchdown on their 30th play of the first quarter. 30th. Uh, great blocking up front. Zone blocking. That means you try to get two on one up to the backer. They do a good job covering everybody up. There's no color in the hole. So the running back. Byron Marshall simply takes it right where it's designed to go, and there's no one touching it. Matt Wogan will kick the point here for Oregon. And actually, conditions have improved a little bit. The wind is lessened just a little bit here in the last five minutes, and that allows Wogan to kick the point through. 27 first quarter points for Oregon. So let us join Ashley Adamson once again. Another game break fueled by Gatorade. Ted, moments ago in Sun Devil Stadium, USC, Arizona State Trojans in the red zone. Cody Kessler hits Trey Madden. He punches one in from 10 yards out. SC up 14-7 in the second quarter. Let's go back to Ted and Glenn. Well, Ashley, here's what happened earlier today. Sean Mannion had a huge day as Oregon State easily held home field against Colorado. It was a much closer game until the fourth quarter. U of A stayed with Washington. And the two tremendous running backs in this conference head to head both had big days and Kevin Hogan off to a nice start tonight. They're playing in downtown Seattle, the annual Washington State game. 
in downtown Seattle. Stanford up tonight. Getting to play in an NFL stadium for those guys. Centralink Field. So two of the conference's best, Stanford and Oregon, both playing in prime time and both out to comfortable leagues. That USC Arizona State game in Tempe. Very interesting to see how Arizona State rebounds. Here's California's Bryce Treggs on a run back. He'll get out here to the 30 with a flag in at the end of the play. Well, this will most likely bring him back a bit. During the return, block in the back on the return team, number 25, the 10 yard penalty. Well, it is a night for cold hard facts, isn't it? Brought to you by Frost Brewed <laughs> Coors Light. Uh, you just look at these national rankings for Oregon this year. Zero turnovers. You, know, you like any time you got single digits. That means you're doing something right if you're nationally ranked yeah. in the single digits everywhere. Well, they, they got through the first sequence of this game without turning the ball over. That was incredible. And three fumbles in the first probably eight or ten plays they ran. California's taken Goff out of the game. So Jared Goff has come out and Zach Klein is coming to quarterback for California. He threw an excellent ball there. And a first down pitch to Bryce Treggs. So Zach Klein, he is a red shirt. And a lot of uh, folks considered him kind of the, uh, the leader during the offseason to become the quarterback this year for California. He is a Bay Area product. Went to San Ramon Valley High School, Danville in the East Bay. Jared Goff won the competition. Goff, as an incoming freshman, did get to Cal early. He was there for spring football. So he went and competed against Klein. Oregon's defensive line is owning the line of scrimmage. And it is reestablishing the line of scrimmage in the backfield. So third down now for Klein in California. He's got four receivers to his right, top of your picture. That's where he's going. And Lasko trying to turn and does. Lasko got the first down. Just enough of an edge with linebacker Rodney Hardrick to get to the line to game. Uh, you run a drag, just a, a little, a quick out route, the arrow route. You get him out there behind the vertical routes. Gives him a little space to run. And the handoff inside to Lasko. Well, Glenn, the bigger picture for Cal. We'll have to wait and see if this clearly if this is a momentary change or if it's going to continue in this game. And when you've had such a buildup for Jared Goff over three games, clearly Sonny Dyke saw something that forced him to make a first quarter change. Klein got belted and still delivered the ball. And Richard Rodgers has it inside the Oregon 20. And Zach Klein showed something there because he stood in knowing he was getting popped. He knew he was going to get popped. The ball came out of his hand. What I like is where the ball goes. It goes into real estate that only his guy has a chance at. It was a nice throw for him. 33-yard gain. Cal goes no huddle. And that's an inside running play that gets it down to about the 15-yard line. I'll throw what Big Jordan Rigsby in there getting a little, little physical. They're, they've been tested a little bit here. They've been punching them out, and the offensive linemen for the Cal starting to say, you know what, we got to start owning the line of scrimmage a little bit. Jeffrey Copperich in the game as a running back carried on that last play. Now Klein to the end zone. There's a tangle man, and the ball's intercepted. Nick Preolamu catches it, laying on his back on the turf after Drake Whitehurst. Whitehurst. Yeah, yeah, he stopped. He was, he had the, Nick Preolamu was on him. Great coverage. He stops and turns in while the ball's in the air. Oliver on his back gets that ball. He'll be the bottom receiver right down here. Great coverage by Oliver. He's grabbing, holding a little bit. He gets pushed off, but he stops while the ball's in the air. You look at that, you assume he thought the play must have been over. That's the way, what I, the way Whitehurst acts like the play was over. That's my assumption. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. And Oliver, what a job on his back to get that. He was shocked when he looked behind and saw the ball was being thrown. Hard to fathom that a team could endure 
a more nightmarish quarter of football than California has just done tonight. They've given up four touchdowns. They've turned the ball over four times in one quarter. And now Oregon gives it back, and that is going to be the first Ducks turnover of the year. Jalen Jefferson comes out with the football. And, and the worst part of that is you got 10 yards on the ground on the physical type play you like, and you cough up the ball. Blocking. And this was freshman. This is Thomas Tyner carrying the ball for the first time. A very highly regarded freshman. And, and what do we see? The ball away from his body. It's raining and wet. And he just can't have that ball away from body. It's got to be tight up, maybe two hands on it, or at least high and tight. Well, we may be uh, having our stats in, folks. And Ryan McGrady, our great researcher, looking up fumble records. For we had five fumbles lost in the first quarter. A throwback play here to the quarterback, and that is an incomplete forward pass. Well, he throw just by, throw by Harper. Harper couldn't get his hand on the yeah. ball. He catches it, and he's trying to get it into his hands to get the laces up, and couldn't do it. So now you're way behind the chains. You talk about being behind schedule. What you've just done is is really put yourself in a bind if you're Cal. So the second down and ten. Play is stopped. Good tackle in space by Oregon to stop that play after Lasko. A short game. Tyson Coleman, linebacker for the Ducks defense. And that gets us to the end of the first quarter. 55 plays run in the quarter. Investment management. And by eSurance, now offering savings for Pac-12 students and alumni. Find out more at eSurance.com slash Pac-12. Now here at Oregon, just like uh, other schools in the conference on the quarter system, class is just getting going. Freshman orientation last night at Matthew Knight Arena. And uh, the Oregon freshmen are feeling a lot better about life than Cal's freshman quarterback is right now. Jared Goff had a whole different kind of orientation. So that sight seen, he's still here with a poncho on. We've not received any word if there was an injury involved in Goff coming out of the game, which is why we're interested to see him still on the sideline. California, after the first Oregon turnover of the season, Zach Klein. And his pass not held in the flat by Richard Rogers. Well, Goff's had some problems today, and that's, if he's not hurt, this is probably the reason he couldn't hold on to the ball. Of course, sacks aren't his fault, but you got to have ball security. If you go down, you keep it. Just struggled a bit throughout the entire first quarter, and now we see Zach Klein in. And he's, uh, they're going for it on fourth. And Klein goes down the sideline and tries to hit Lasco, but Lasco was well covered by linebacker Rodney Hardrick, and California will turn it over on downs. So Zach Klein, he was on the California team last year, but did not play. He redshirted, so in his second year in the program, but this is the first time he's played in a game. And what's, without knowing, clearly Sonny Dykes' mindset, what's interesting about that is to make a quick pull of, of the guy that you've anointed and has been, had a nice buildup for his first three games. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and to do it, not knowing the situation is dead, but in a hostile situation like this is a tough place to play. Byron Marshall gets pounded there by the Cal defense. Is it Lapite from the secondary helping lead the surge? You know, Oregon has a lot of negative runs. It's just because if you if you understand what they're doing to you and you see the 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 base couple of plays coming at you, you can stop it. But they do so many things off it. If you make one mistake, that's when they exploit it for those big games. Oh, drag down, and uh, that looks bad and is bad. So Michael Lowe of California got a part of Marshall he wasn't supposed to. Personal foul, face. 
face mask on the defense number five. 15 yard penalty, first down. There we go, Marshall. Yeah, and it was a face mask all the way. And uh, really got to be, that's a, that can, that's a dangerous play. Myron Marshall's had a lot of action. He's had 13 carries for 95 yards tonight and three fumbles, all of which were recovered by Oregon. Mariota with a keep. And Mariota takes it inside to Cal 40. Great job by Mariota holding on to that ball. Hardy Nickerson came in to strip that with a big hit. Mariota was able to hold on to it. Mariota 7 of 14 passing, two touchdowns. Marshall with the Mariota out there. Is he going to throw a block? Who's going to get in the way? And Marshall, <laughs> the guy that Mariota bumped, Camparelli, fought off the block and actually made the tackle after a 15-yard game. Mariota is going to get an earful from his linemen in meetings. They're going to say, where was the cut block? What were you doing? You could have had a touchdown block. Block in the back on the offense, number 83. The 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Meanwhile, First Johnny down. Munt, freshman tight end, had the bad block. Although this could be a different version of a bad block. <laughs> That's absolutely true. He gets out there. Now, he's not supposed to be here, but as things come to him, he starts looking for Camparelli. He starts eyeing him up, eyeing him up, and, yeah, no, I'm not really going to hit you there too bad. <laughs> Camparelli makes the play. It's a glancing blow. Yeah. Yeah. First down for Oregon back at the Cal 41. And Mario puts that one. And a nice hands catch reaching up by Johnny Munt. Makes up for the bad block. Freshman tight end who had a big game here two weeks ago against Tennessee. Caught five that day. And that's a throw by Mariota that he struggled with early in the game, put a little too much. You see him, really nice touch on that ball. Now Marshall into the middle. And there's still rain that's kind of being blown through the, the field, but I think you can see it on your screens at home. It's dramatically better than it was midway through the first quarter. I mean, it was really monsoon-like for a period of time. And Marshall gets a swing. And Marshall has put his head down and trying to get through the Cal defenders, but Michael Lowe stood his ground. Now, now Marshall came... Marshall did a nice job putting his shoulder down and coming, but there's a flag now, and it comes in very late, on the hit of some type. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they're saying here. Personal foul, number 75 of the defense. Late hit. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So look at Puka Lopa, defensive end, must have come flying in late. So here's the tackle. Yeah, and, and oh, there it was, yeah. Clearly over, and he threw himself down there. And on first and goal, Mariota takes it in on the keep. So Mariota runs for his first touchdown of the night. And those, the students that are staying are soaking wet then. That's the first action they've seen in front of them. The whole first quarter was played at the other end of Watson Stadium. You can look through the lenses of our great crew. You can see the wind is blowing the rain all around, and including our cameras. Maldonado comes out to kick that extra point for the Ducks. Uh, Marcus Mariota getting it done again. Efficient football by the Ducks. Don't read. Keep it and go. Marcus Mariota, during the bye week for Oregon last weekend, went home. He went back to Honolulu. Made sure he went to his favorite restaurant, had strawberry shake. His mom is here tonight. First time she's been to a Ducks game this season. And I don't know how much more Mariota's going to play, given where we are 34 0. That kick out of bounds, short of the goal line. Kickoff out of bounds on the kicking team. 
So it'll be a good drive start here for California. Let's jump back to Ashley Adamson for another game break fueled by Gatorade. Well, Ted, the back and forth continues in Tempe. USC, ASU, Sun Devils on the move. Taylor Kelly finds Marion Grice in the front of the end zone. Nice concentration by Grice. An 11 yard touchdown, and we are all tied up. All right, Ashley. Well, meanwhile, here in Eugene, Zach Klein continues on for California, finds Chris Harper with a throw. And we're still clearly a long night of football remaining for California, but immediately Zach Klein has to look at this as opportunity. As difficult as this night is, you're playing the number two team in the country. Opportunity. Because you know that at the end of the tonight, that's the first question Sonny Dykes will be asked. Perfectly said, because you have to seize what you've been given. Now, nobody wants to come in on those circumstances. Nobody wants to come in down and in the rain. But you take what's given, and you make the best of it, and you hope that you get a chance a little down the line. Third down for Cal. Klein backs up to look back to the Cal sideline. Brandon Bigelow, the running back. Quick screen to Harper. Look at how quick that Oregon defense surrounds him. But Harper looks like he pushed himself forward enough and got a first down. Yeah, the old jailbreak screen. Get it out here. All the linemen are going to be out trying to block. You run behind that line and get north and south. I like the fact Harper knew where that, where that down was. He knew where yeah. the sticks were and had to get there. That's a staple play for Sonny Dyke's offense, isn't it? When the offensive linemen get down that field. That's right. Yeah, that... Uh, the old jailbreak, jet, whatever screen you want to call it. Klein shoots it out of bounds. Klein's throwing motion on down the field throws almost looks like he's, it's like he's aiming, but it's almost like a shot put. It, it doesn't look like a natural throwing motion at this time. Might just be his motion, that's the way it is, but the ball is flying on him, that's for sure. Lasco. Get outside. Boy, flying up from the secondary it was Avery Patterson, the leader of that very experienced and talented Oregon secondary. Patterson was flying up there and disrupted the play. Yeah, Nick Aliotti told us about the secondary being really intelligent and how they see the whole game. Well, right there was a perfect example. Patterson saw the stock blocks, knew there was no one in the pattern by him, so he could take off and leverage the edge on. The far left side of that picture was the longtime defensive coordinator here in the Pac-10, now Pac-12, Nick Aliotti. So I'm convinced that if yeah. they ever make right down there, that's ever, Nick. If they ever make Bull Durham as a football movie, Nick Aliotti's got to be the head coach in that movie. <laughs> I what a, think would he be right. a great character? Either that or the crusty old equipment manager. Uh, he'd be a great. And he's done a terrific job here at Oregon. Fourth down, Cal goes, and Cal gets. Another what? run by Daniel Lasco. I'll tell you what, Jordan Rigsby, again, he's playing with a lot of pride. He knows that they're down, but he pulls, gets in the, gets in the hole, smacking people around. It's getting chippy out there, and he's part of it. He's not going quietly. That's part of a, of a rebuilt Cal offensive line, and they've been very happy Lasco, I mentioned Lasco, Lasco comes from the Houston area, the Woodlands just north of Houston, and he, in the second half of their game with Ohio State in Berkeley, he really ran and he had the, the aggressive downhill, is the term it's used, running basically north and south that Cal's looking for. That ball knocked away at the last and incomplete. Jacob Wark, intended receiver. Correction on that. That intended receiver was Steven Anderson. So Cal on third down. Swings to Lasco. And he's cut and short of the first. Ek Crayola move. Well, they've already gone for it fourth in this situation before. So they figured they got two downs to get that nine yards. Look at the play count already. We're not even midway through the second quarter. Remember, we told you 200 plays tonight is an absolute possibility. That's a number that's rarely been reached in college football. 
Incomplete pass. Coprich out of the backfield. And so Cal turns it back to Oregon on downs. Not even this uh, incredibly rough first half weather-wise can slow Oregon. A minute 18 <laughs> is their average touchdown time. Tonight they're about a minute 45. But I want to know, how did Adam Gordon know about my Amazon habits? Put that in. I had no idea. How does Adam know that? <laughs> That's pretty good. What the Google searches? Is that something? Well, Oregon has done to California tonight. Exactly as Thomas Tyner, freshman running back, carries. They've done exactly what they've done to most of the opponents they've played in recent time. The one team that was able to slow Oregon last year and beat them was Stanford, which when you watch this in person, Glenn, and you look at all the other scores, it's mind-blowing to think what Stanford was able to do on this field last year. Well, to come into come into here and do it, but again, you have to have the athletes, obviously. you got to be able to, to man up a lot. you got to be able to stay square, be smart, always keep color in the gap. And it's tough. Grow behind there. It's tough to be that disciplined every play, and Stanford was able to do it. Addison was the intended receiver. And of course, the person who would dispute my, my feeling is David Shaw. He would say, it's not mind blowing to me. We're good. And he's right about that. And if you've just if you've just flipped on and joined us during our your Saturday night of college football watching Oregon in command here, but DeAnthony Thomas on the opening kickoff of the game appeared to twist or turn his right ankle, roll it in some way, and he has not been back since. Very short punt. Off the side of the foot of Maldonado will give California the ball when we come back on this damp Saturday night in Eugene. So the only bad turn for you, Oregon is right there tonight. Opening kick to Anthony Thomas. Yeah, big, big loss for them, obviously, for the game, but not enough to, to slow them down. But blocking by the wide receivers and the quarterback play. Oregon has looked good with all those turnovers they've been able to jump on. Bigelow on the run for California. You think about Byron Marshall, he fumbled the ball the first two times he carried it. He's fumbled three times tonight, yet has 106 rushing yards and two touchdowns in the first half. That Oregon player, Ricky Habili Haimuli, being helped off. It's going to be frustrating. He fought his way back. What a tough injury to get back and play this year. Bigelow. And there's a flag thrown at the end of Bigelow's short run. Probably a, looks like a hold out there. But, you know, what a difference between the way the, the, the wide receivers for Oregon block on the perimeter. Holding on the offense, number 78. Kenyard Penley, second down. And, and you know, take a look here at the top of the screen. Watch, watch the receivers block on this. They let guys go. Yeah. They didn't and stalk in there. By the way, I gotta go give Freddie Tagaloa some credit. That was a great block. He had his hands inside and destroyed and dominated the guy when he gets a holding call. They're not allowed to dominate, I guess. Batted down. That's a four. That was a four pass. Oregon. Defender getting giddy here for no reason. That's a forward pass and incomplete. Oh, just batted down. Get your hands up, right? I'll tell you what, that's Torodney Prevo. He's a six foot three inch freshman from Houston, but he's got that build. You can see on that play that we're seeing more and more with outside rush men today. Long arms, wingspan. But you know, getting back to the previous play, and here's a perfect example, Glenn. What what the Sunny Dykes air raid offense could really use, what we've seen from Oregon, is to get to get Brendan Bigelow going. If they could get a running game and have Bigelow and Lasco then serve as a little bit of a changeup back, what a difference that would make for the Cal offense. And they they want that. They just don't have a back that fits their mold yet. And they've got to, they they love Bigelow, but he just hasn't put it all together yet. 
And they need that, and they need a big back that can grind in the fourth quarter for them. But it's going to take them a while to get their guys in. That's one thing Sonny Dykes talked this about was, yeah, they don't have the hammer back right now. The guy in the fourth quarter when the defense is tired can pound the ball out to Braylon Addison. Well, Addison may go. And he is gone. Touchdown, Oregon. 75 yards. When you're a winning program and you're high profile, you get depth. And you get guys that can play and special teamers that are good across the board and can turn any play into a home run for you. And again, that's what Oregon sees in Addison, sophomore from Texas, Missouri City, Texas. So that when DeAnthony Thomas goes down, they have four other guys that can make plays. That's how you're number two in the country. Well, there's how, what, what incredible weaponry in the football sense Oregon has. 12 different players have scored. This is only game four, by the way. Yeah, that shows the depth on the team and how many speedsters they have. And it becomes a competition. It's great. It breeds success. When you're at practice, everybody knows, hey, they blocked. They're going to they're gonna get the touchdown block, but they're going to get their chances, too. And again, after just a brutal first quarter of weather, it's it's improved dramatically. It's still lightly raining here. It's still windy, but not nearly as bad as it was. By the kicking team. Ball's placed at the 35-yard line. First down. And so this coming Wednesday will be a most interesting edition of the drive. And Sonny Dykes and Todd Graham have been marvelous in allowing Pac-12 Network cameras access behind the scenes, behind the curtains of their football programs. You'll see it Wednesday nights, the next edition, new airing at 7 p.m. every Wednesday here, and replayed much during the rest of the week on Pac-12 Networks. I did ask Sonny Dykes last night if he has joined SAG yet. <laughs> Screen Actors Guild. They'll be getting a mailing in about a week, I think. It, but really, and it is a great credit to those two coaches that they have been willing to allow fans, you know, fellow college fans, fellow college students at all the schools around the Pac-12 will look at the behind the scenes. Understanding what it means for your program to, to get that behind the scenes look, but also it's a chance to, to sell yourself a little. A lot of guys get to see what it's really like and would it be a place they'd be interested in going. Well, Jeffrey Coppridge is getting a chance to play for Cal tonight with an injury. Kalfani Muhammad was hurt on first quarter play. He has not returned. And again, Jared Goff, who had a very difficult first quarter, was taken out of the game and replaced by Zach Klein. Zach Klein is a redshirt, second-year player at Cal. And this is the first game action of his career. And again, no punting here. It's fourth down going. And Smothered by Oregon, smothered by DeForest Buckner. Six seven. The defensive and line for Oregon continually wins the line of scrimmage. DeForest Buckner, 44, swats aside Freddie Tagaloa and makes a huge play. And yesterday when we had a chance to visit with Nick Aliotti, which again, that's one of the pleasures of our job. But you know, Nick Aliotti was, without trying to brag, was really saying, and again, Nick there at the very far left side of Way the Way out there, right yeah. there. Pardon right. my bad drawing. Right. But uh, Nick was talking about the defensive line. I mean, this, remember, they lost Deion Jordan, Michael Clay, and Kiko Alonso. Three of the defensive front seven from last year are now playing on Sunday. And they're still a defensive front seven. They said very strong, playing very well. Young, but incredibly athletic and strong. And a guy like Buckner, who's a second teamer on the depth chart here at Oregon, would be a big time player just about anywhere else. Oh, yeah. And he gets a lot of reps because not only in game situation, but then when they get way ahead, he gets more reps as well. So. 
just strong. Yeah, Mariota still in the game. I'm not sure we'll see him in the second half tonight. Byron Marshall still in the game. Oh, that was a forward pass. Well, the refs are very slow on that whistle. That was clearly a forward pass. They need to blow that dead. This is the challenge that the Oregon defense understands they have. Nick Aliotti talks about it. And they know they're going to have it because of the way they play and how quickly they score. And our, Nick Aliotti told us yesterday when he told me when we were here for a game last year, he said, look, you tell your team, you can't look at stats. You just got to put that away because they're not going to happen. You have to reset your defense's expectations of what is winning football. And you, you know, you got you to gotta let them know. We're going to face a lot of plays. We're going to give them some yardage. We're going to give them some points. But that's not the thing is we're going to win a lot of games doing it this way. So put those expectations aside. Look where guys get drafted and come play defense here. So that incompletion will bring the Cal offense back out. After the punt, this will be, we've had 89 plays in this first half. This will be the fourth punt. Two by each team. Maldonado. Franks lets it bounce, and Oregon's going to down it inside the five. Well, we'll follow the Ducks again next week on Pac-12 Networks. We'll be going to Boulder. For Oregon and Colorado, It'll be a great atmosphere. It's Parents Weekend, so full of Folsom Field, and the Buffs will be hoping they can rebound from their tough beat today. We'll have it for you with our pregame starting at two o'clock next Saturday. Kickoff will be three o'clock on Pac-12 Networks. Looking forward to spending some time in Boulder, Folsom Stadium, of course, and also at Sam Polis House, having you know, a bite to eat. That's a pick for six with a flag. So they'll wait for the flag. And well, that was a basically a gimme for Avery Patterson. As that ball just hung in the air. But the flag was thrown on the route. 27. Pass interference on number 27 on the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty. First down. So Terrence Mitchell is called, and that negates the interception. Well, it's called because the ball is in the air and he then is in contact right there uh, while the ball's in the air. Can't do it. But you, you look at the throwing motion. Well, that's saying that ball's just up in the air way too long. Right? Zach Klein's throwing motion is the release point. The launch point looks odd. Running play here for Lasko on first down. That'll get five yards. You're 41 down here. You, you control a little clock. You run the ball. You like that game. Five yards. You're on schedule. Don't try to do too much. Just give your team a little confidence. Oh, great play out of the secondary by Avery Patterson. Flashing through to drop. This running play for a big loss. Right at the bottom of the screen. Got two out there. Fullback can only try one. Nicely designed defense, and Avery Patterson, great job of recognizing what was coming at him and getting there. Now putting them well behind the sticks yet again. Two-yard loss on that play. It's the common offensive set for Cal. Four wide receivers. They run this set about three quarters of the plays. That pass off Richard Rodgers, hands it incomplete. Thrown behind Rodgers a little bit here, but you, you want to be on the field, you want to be out there and catch the ball. It's a tough one, I know. You're running, it's wet, it's behind you, but you can't let it get to your body. Get your hands on it. Too many little mistakes by Cal. And you know, as a, as a tackle, I would have just reached out and snagged that ball. <laughs> That's me. Well, this is a... Uh, Schedule-wise for California, not easy with a new system. New coach, freshman quarterback, play Oregon State and Oregon, two of the top five teams in the country. You did have a bye week in between, but still back-to-back. -back. That's a rough assignment for Oregon. Just another what has become their pattern. Marcus Mariota, David Shaw, when we were at Stanford a couple of weeks ago visiting with David Shaw, he just calmly said in a matter-of-fact way to us and we're, we're 
talking about the conference and talking about watching Oregon. He said, and they have the best quarterback in the country. Yeah. He, he didn't make any, it's not a bold proclamation. It was just like, you all know that. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know that I agree with him, but I, I, under, I think he's among the elite, that's for certain. Mariota, and we have a chance to talk to him, and I noticed this about him last year, and we saw it again yesterday. You know, he's, he's not bulky yet. To me, he reminds me of what Colin Kaepernick would have been, look, might have looked like five years ago. Yeah, long and lean. Uh, and he has the same gait, very similar gait when he runs, faster than you think. But what, he, what Mariota has is what the great pianist Bruce Hornsby called spider fingers. <laughs> it's a, a fascinating dynamic. Mariota there hands the ball off and Tyner runs it into Cal territory. Hey, there's a Look spider the fingers. Long, skinny fingers. And I so the last time I saw fingers like that was Pedro Martinez, which is the element to the greatest curveball pitchers in baseball. All have long Sandy Koufax, long, skinny fingers. Are, Mariota told me never play baseball. Are there never any play. athletes that excel with the short, stubby fingers? Because that's what we're on that. Well, that was my problem, too. We'll have a pool with you. Incomplete to Lyurla. Marcus said he never played baseball in Honolulu. Played some soccer, obviously, as another sport. But explains the great feat. The, if you can play soccer. Yeah, right. But I would think those that that hand size and measurement is going to really be an, a, an asset for him in throwing and holding the football. Over the head of Daryl Hawkins. All right, our studio crew is getting ready for the Dr. Pepper halftime report on this great Saturday night. We've got three Pac-12 games going on at the same time, so we'll get you caught up on everything from both Seattle and Tempe, as well as what took place earlier today. Mariota's 10 of 21. He's not had a high percentage at all throwing. On a tough night to throw, and that ball high again and incomplete. Addison, the receiver, and I, I would say it, you have to frame everything in this weather condition, Glenn, but he's not had an accurate first half throw. It's interesting, though, if you look at what Goff or Klein is doing, the ball's floating. Yeah. And for him, it, it's not floating. It's coming out of his hand hot. It's just getting away from him a bit. It's a little yeah. too hot. High. Everything seems to be high tonight. And again, you understand that these conditions are not ideal. So fourth down, and we've had both teams just dialing it up on fourth down throughout this first half. And we mentioned that timeout. magic Oregon. number. Number one. It's not. I shouldn't say it's not a magic timeout. number. We kind of look at it as such. The total number of plays. When Oregon runs this fourth down play, it will be the 98th play of the first half. 98 plays in a half. Well, you, you said it before the game, 200 crazy. was your number. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. The question now becomes, what's for breakfast and when we make our flights? <laughs> <laughs> Here's where Oregon ranks with the heavyweights of college football and not just Oregon. Of course, they're, they're at Stanford in that list as well. So two Pac-12 schools that have staked their claim. They've resided in the top. And the way Washington is looking right now, that's really giving the Pac-12 North early signs it could be a real good three-way fight. Swing pass to Tyner. Spins away, but will be dropped short of a first half. And of course, great open field tackle by McClure. Beaver fans at Oregon State. I'm sure even after the, the big win they had at USC, Cougar fans are hoping their teams can get be a part of that mix too. But the North is early. The North is looking like it could be really something. You know, you're absolutely right. But with Across the board, it is so strong right now with the emergence of Washington and Washington State's defense. So Klein is sacked. There's your tall, thin Tony Washington. Man again. <laughs> Tony Washington is in there. 
along with Prevo. Final 30 seconds of the half. Eighteenth throw already for Klein, and this one complete. Jackson Buzo with the catch and a first down. <laughs> Klein is nine of eighteen since relieving Goff. Goff was three of six, but had three fumbles while he was in as quarterback. <laughs> Well, it's been a busy weekend just here in the 35-mile corridor from Eugene to Corvallis. All of this action on Pac-12 networks. But I have to tell you, I have to tell you, the best news of the weekend, the University of Oregon has become the latest program to add sand volleyball. Starting right. in the spring, Oregon will play sand volleyball. Glenn Parker and I have immediately hey! volunteered for that duty on Pac-12 Networks. No doubt. And of course, they follow Arizona, which is already getting ready. And yep, Stanford is playing it, I know. As the Olympic fervor of that sport is now carried forward, they won't call it. If you notice, they're not calling it. Beach. Yes, but you know it's a great it's a great compliment to your yeah. to your volleyball squad. So you get yeah. ones they're going to be different seasons. Of course, you you only you'll have five teams with two on each, uh, two du duets, five duets or doubles teams, and it's a good compliment to your program because there will be crossover between some of them, and that it's a it's a, a neat sport and it's exciting to watch. Now the thing is they've got to make it. And I think that's what the evolution is. When they started this, they said they wanted to capture that feel of what professional beach volleyball feels like, that arena. And I think they're going to get that done. Yeah, the initial plan for the schools will be that the indoor volleyball players, the women, will play outdoors in the springtime. Right. Gives them just an added time to play and pursue their sport. So Cal lining up here certainly Let's take a shot here. We're going to get a timeout taken by Oregon prior to this play by Cal. Each team still has a timeout remaining. Well, here's what they've done at Autzen. One of those losses that won the Stanford that cost Oregon last year a chance to play the BCS championship. Rematch will be on a Thursday night at Stanford in early November. Over the middle, incomplete to Rodgers, and so one player left in the half. Well, Cal is going to try to put some points on the board. Vincenzo D'Amato his long career is 52. This will be 46. The wind has died down. The flags are flat. High snap, Booza put it down, and the kick is good. Well done by Vincenzo D'Amato. Yeah, you're right, much, much better condition to try to kick a ball than in the first quarter. So Cal gets points to end the half. Oregon had a lot more points, and it was just another Oregon half. 291 yards and six touchdowns. So let's hear now from uh, Oregon coach Mark Helfrich with Drea. 
things head coach Marcus told me yesterday that he wanted to get into a better rhythm offensively early and he showed that what is your assessment of his first half performance <laughs> well arrhythmic for sure in terms of uh, you know just the, the events of the day but uh, you know so far so good too bad for the defense to have to give up give up the three points because they've played, been outstanding DeAnthony Thomas limped into the locker room early in the first quarter what is his updated status at this point I don't know I don't know he'll be, he'll be great he'll have a big smile on his face okay Best I, think I, I, think I just saw Carl Spackler too <laughs> Best of luck in the second half. Let's send it back to you, Ted. Wow. <laughs> How about Mark Elfrich? Mark Elfrich with a Caddyshack reference. So at the end of the night, we'll see if he can drop a little, uh, maybe he can drop a slap shot on us, too. You never know. Eddie Shore, old time hockey. <laughs> yeah, well done, Parker. 41 to 3 here, Oregon. Now back to our studios for the Dr. Pepper halftime report as we say hi to Mike Yan. Well, since we left you with uh, Mark Elfrich giving you a Carl Spangler reference, I think Sam Polo said it rest. The heavy stuff hasn't started yet. <laughs> Oregon with a 41 to three. I, I can't help, you know, obviously these kind of games, Glenn, you can't help but feel for Cal. You feel for Sonny Dykes and he let us listen into his last words for his team. Don't let the atmosphere get you. Don't let the climate get you. Don't get the surroundings get you. And it got Jared Goff. Yeah, it did. And, and the story obviously was the weather and, and the rain and the potential turnovers. But one team handled it well yeah. and one team did not. And, and it caused the turnovers and it was the landslide. Yeah. And so California, after three tremendous games with Jared Goff, they turned to Zach Klein. He quarterback the rest of the half. We assume he'll start the second half. Finding that out in just a moment or two as Cal will receive the kick. We'll find out also uh, in a short while how Mark Helfords chooses to play this half as the conditions are better than they were earlier. Just at halftime, I was talking to California's radio crew, Todd McKim, who works on Cal's radio crew, worked here in Eugene for many years, probably 25 years, and he said that the rain in the first quarter was the worst he's ever seen up here. That's saying something. Yeah. It <laughs> helps explain how the game was played in the first quarter. <laughs> this is some things, sometimes you just have to laugh. Players are ready to play. The only thing we're missing right now is a ball. Ah. <laughs> That's part of the title of the game, right? Football. <laughs> All right. Well, someone, someone, someone just volunteered a ball. <laughs> and and uh, they went and retrieved him from inside, so we're ready to go for the second half tonight. And understandably, given weather of the night this might be the smallest crowd in the second half of a game at Autzen Stadium in probably 500 years Logan's kick and boy we had a lot of those in this first half out of bounds it'll be a 35 yard line spot for Cal well how about a game recap uh, D'Anthony Thomas early on that roll of the ankle that uh, apparently what sent him to the lockers and he didn't play the rest of the time but Byron Marshall came up big after not being able to handle the ball well 103 rushing yards two touchdowns turnovers obviously the big part of it Cal did not respond well to the elements and uh, Marcus Mariota 114 yards two touchdowns running the offense efficiently and you see right there the story of this game was weather turnovers and efficient play so Zach Klein hands off to Bigelow Brendan Bigelow trying to use his speed, but Oregon very speed, very speedy themselves on defense, and they hold that edge. To Anthony Thomas, and you see, you can see the very tip of a crutch underneath that big poncho. Zach Klein gets away and gets that ball back and out of bounds. Past the line of scrimmage. Now the Oregon side. Not happy about that, but no flag thrown. Well, it was outside the tackle box, and he threw the ball, and it went past the line of scrimmage. So Chris Harper was close enough to be in the area. There's Klein's numbers in his first game at California. Of 
course, the weather really affecting how he holds the ball and, and how he delivers the ball and his, and his motion. So we'll maybe get a better look at him sometime in better weather. Tried that inside screen, but Oregon smothers it. Tony Washington pressured Zach Klein. That's another thing at halftime, Glenn. You spoke to Mike Pulaski, who's an outstanding quarterback at Cal, and he talked to you about Klein's throwing motion. Yeah, I, I asked him. I, I wanted to know, was it odd? Because we could tell something was wrong. He said, well, when you're a quarterback and you're in the rain, you cannot bring the ball back because that's when you'll fumble it, like we saw Goff. So you hold it at your shoulder, you still use your same steps, but because you do, your hips are ahead of your arm, and it opens you up a bit. All right, well, this is a play that Cal tried, and look at this! It actually is tipped and caught. This is a play that Cal ran against Ohio State two weeks ago, and they used Jared Goff. He wears the same number as the punter Cole Leininger. Goff came out and through a pass. This is Leininger. This is the punter. And Darius Powell ends up with the ball. And it's tipped by a teammate. I... Yeah. So it goes off the fingertips. It was actually Lucas King saying that caught the ball, but it went off the fingertips of Michael Barton. Now, the, the coaches for Oregon were protesting immediately, tapping their head, saying, a legal man, Jack Folliard's microphone not working, but yes, because of that. And you see the interior linemen, who are all have eligible numbers, but they're interior, they're downfield. And that is illegal men downfield. Sonny Dykes is still pleading his case, and... This is something we've already seen from Cal in its early games this year is they will run. They'll, they'll try to fool you. They'll run a couple of different sort of plays, the special teams plays. Leininger does punt this one. Braylon Addison ran one back 75 yards in the first half. He's still going. He may go on this one. Cal has an angle on him. They can't get him. And Addison runs his second punt back tonight, and that was spectacular. Eric Dargan, unbelievable block at the end of Springer. It does not go where planned, and he gets to the outside. Now he's got to make people miss. What a great job. And then watch Eric Dargan, number four right here, get ahead of that guy. That's right, he gets ahead, and that's what springs the corner. They leverage the side. Everybody gets a block, everybody gets that touchdown. 67-yard return. He ran 157 yards to do it. But the second touchdown punt return tonight by Braylon Addison. Kickoff coming into the field of play. It'll be run back by Bryce Treggs. Cal's lost a couple of players tonight. Kalfani Muhammad has not returned, running back since the first quarter. And Cameron Jackson, a starting cornerback for them, has not returned. Of course, Oregon lost to Anthony Thomas tonight on the opening kickoff, Drea. Yeah, still no official word from the Oregon athletic training staff on his official status, but we do see him on the sideline. He has his crutches, and he has been pretty active, just moving fast on those crutches up and down the sideline, cheering on his teammates, smiling, being very vocal, and a very positive vibe and aura from him that I've observed, Ted. Yeah, plenty of reasons to do it tonight as Coprich carries. For California, Stevenson Ranch, California, for Jeffrey Copper. He is a red shirt. Running back, and he's getting, a, getting his most extensive playing opportunity tonight. You know, the trick is to convince kids to win the play. It's easy to look at that score and, and forget that you were 
setting out to drain the swamp, you know, and, and now you now you're 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 in it. Flag comes flying out from in front of the California bench on that running play. So they really just have to convince the kids just win each play, go out try to win a play, and then you win a series and you and you put some points on the board. Illegal substitution on the offense. That's a five yard penalty. Replete third down. The 12th player did not get off the field prior to the snap. And that's funny, Glenn, because that's the sort of thing that if you play this tempo, and both teams tonight are doing it, you, your, your substitution becomes an art form, doesn't it? Absolutely, because you've got you to get the guy off, but you also have to give the defense that chance to substitute as well. And that's what Oregon, another thing they've excelled at. Boy, Klein, then he put some zip on that ball. Tried to throw a deep post there to Chris Harper. But Nick Aliotti and his run here at Oregon as this offense has morphed into the high speed. He's become a master at using shifts. He basically said yesterday 20 to 22 guys will play on defense for him in the course of a game. Yeah, he likened it to hockey without the full line shift, but guys coming in and out and getting their time and do it on the run. Get them on the run going. So Leininger's punt. Fair catch taken this time by Addison. See if he gets a run back later if he tries for a, a three-peat. Well, Oregon has used a return game to deliver the Quicken's loans. Amazing plays of the game. Two run back by Braylon Addison tonight. First one 75. And then this one 67. And, and one is break the daylight and great speed. And one is unbelievable vision and making people miss and picking up blocks down the field. He ran farther in those two punt returns than I've run since I retired. Wow, Byron. <laughs> I heard that. And I'll vouch for that. Byron Marshall still getting a chance to play here in the second half as you see that. Braylon Addison becoming the fourth player to run two punts back in a game in Pac-12 history. Saw the great Mike Garrett, what a player he was at USC. Sportsman like foul tax on 15 against Cal. Well, the Cal players we mentioned in the first half getting a little chippy. So it started early on with the fumbles and guys in piles, and it's just it just keeps going. Marshall tried to get outside, and he got hit there. Those are the kind of plays, I mean, in this kind of game for California, you got a starter, Dan, Dan Camparelli out there, did a great job when it looked like Marshall might have taken that home. A guy who's not giving up, comes from the far end, hustles, gets down the line of scrimmage and makes a play, as you said, stops maybe from going the distance. Mario, ooh, Addison with a drop. So it's about the only thing that hasn't gone right early in the year for Oregon is Mariota's completion percentage. And tonight it's been a, a combination of his own misfires and a play like that where ball's thrown right at, right there and dropped. Yeah, and, and of course the weather obviously has something to do with that tonight. Marshall takes it for a first down to the California 20. DeAndre Coleman on the tackle. And, and you know, again, that grind, that offensive line for Oregon. Zone blocking was used to be huge in the NFL, it still is, because it helps you grind down big defensive linemen, and that's what they do. Mariota still trying to get that play. Well, he's thrown that four or five times tonight, that close to Addison, but Stephen McClure made a good play on the ball. Stephen McClure is, is a name we've called quite a few times tonight. He's, he's playing hard, and he's been involved in a lot of plays. And he's not stopping. He was on good coverage there, got his arm in there. Thomas Tyner now the running back. And Tyner, speed. Fits perfectly at Oregon. Touchdown. Wow, how 
unfamiliar to that look. Uh, that allowed them to use the wide side of the field and just run by everybody. They like to pull their center and their right tackle, and it starts. You got to look at Fisher right here. He pulls out, the center pulls. They're going to get to the edge, they're going to leverage the edge, and they're going to win. And there's big Jake Fisher with the block. Great job, Tyner, setting the block with his path, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thomas Tyner, he's an Oregonian. That's already his fourth touchdown. He's only carried 17 times in his first year at Oregon, and it extends the Ducks' lead. I chose and they're scoring plays. I mean, not just the two punt returns, but they've had five other offensive touchdowns of at least 14 yards or more on the scoring plays. It's a different de definition of chunk yardage, isn't it? Yeah. Bryce Treggs gets out here and it, across the 20. You know, you're right. It's a different definition of chunk yardage and explosive plays and quickness. And it, they're just the ability that they have. I mean, the course of course, like cold hard facts as we look. Look at those, the scoring that they put up. And we're only, as you said, Ted, we're barely into this third quarter. Mark Helfrich, we haven't really touched on this yet tonight. I mean, you know, this is different for him. Of course, his first time head coach. He's not even 40 years old. First time he's been on the sideline. He's been upstairs calling plays at all of his prior stops. And it's really special because he's from Oregon. Coos Bay, Oregon. He was recruited out of high school there as a potential walk-on player here by Mike Malati. Instead, he went and played at Southern Oregon University where his dad had played. Zach Klein and Jackson Blues could not hang on. Helfrich then Started on his coaching tenure. His first job was here. Mike Bellotti hired him as a GA. Dirk Cutter was here as well. And then he went to other places, Arizona State, Colorado, before coming back here. But what did what he like? And I asked him this a little bit yesterday. And he admitted it's special to be an Oregonian coaching this team. Hasn't happened in a long time. At a point where the program is a national power, where this is becoming a destination for, for young players around the country. Special, obviously. And, and like you said earlier as well, the support that the entire state puts into this program, uh, that much more to them, obviously. And of course, they have a way of doing things. They call it the, the man of Oregon or the Oregon way that they do things, that they're, they're trying to establish that as, as their baseline Oregon. of, of attitude, of performance and their mentality of who they are. The state has such pride in this program. That's why it, it has to resonate for an Oregonian now to be the head coach. And nobody was more supportive of Mark Helfrich than Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly was going to take the job last year at Tampa Bay, and he wanted Mark Helfrich to succeed him. When he did take the job finally with the Philadelphia Eagles this year, Oregon wasted no time and said, Mark Helfrich, you're the man. the punt for Cal. No, well, a muff. Not even not a run back, but a muff. But it's been that kind of night for Oregon. Well, that is recovered by California. All right, so the muff indeed does cost possession. Well, he fair catches, and as he's come up with the ball, it hits him right in the chest. He has to cushion it with his hands and his arm. Hits his chest shield, bounces right off. Good coverage to come up with that ball. Chad Delaney, the returner, fumbling. And California's Lucas King recovered. Boy, a nice open field tackle as Lasco was trying to get to the edge and turn and Joe Walker as now we're into that. 
time of the night when Oregon is going to get defenders 20 through 25 on the field. And Walker with a good open field tackle. No gain. Anderson on the catch. Steven Anderson. That was a nice throw by Zach Klein. That's on. That's out there. That's to the field on a deep out. He put enough on it to get it right there. That was a, that was a nice throw by him. And what we talked about seems to be resonating here, Glenn, as the night's gone along and the weather is well, it's not as bad as it was. He's throwing the ball with more strike. You can see why he was a contender for the job. Lasco runs for a first down. Come that night for California. The score is clear, but offensively, it's it's been far more quantity than quality. He stepped out of bounds. The receiver out stepped out of bounds. It came in. He didn't he didn't realize that it was his right foot. Darius Powell there is the hats come flying off, which is the signal that he did step out of bounds, which makes him an ineligible receiver. Yeah. But you know, every one of these kids out here has a lot of pride. That's you don't get to play college football unless you're you're prideful and you and you want to be the best. And so these guys are going to keep fighting, and now it's a matter of what do they figure is a win from this point out. The receiver went out of bounds. It came back in. Was first to touch the ball. That is illegal touching. Loss of down. We're going to get it back right it here. Down. And we look at that. That foot was out of bounds prior. Just just touched that line and came back in. Officials were right on it. Yep, called it right away. You can't be the first to touch when you've stepped out. And so Cal losing the down. It'll be second down from the 15-yard line of Oregon. Cal's run 64 plays tonight. They're averaging just over three yards a play. Gonna be the touchdown. Klein. Klein thought he had it. Richard Rogers. But the breakup by Eric Dargan. Yeah, nice job by Eric Dargan. He's trailing. He knows the ball's coming in. He does a good job. And he even look his hel his helmet turns backwards just but he just looks back and he can see that ball and knock it out. It looks like he's playing the receiver's hands, isn't he? Yes, it appears that yeah. way. He's he's play, nice he played job. the receiver's hands. the other corner and a fight for that ball and a flag will be thrown on Ekpre Olamu. It appeared there was contact before the ball got there and I'm not sure that Ekpre Olamu ever looked. He, he got up with some attitude though. Pass interference on the defense number 14. Foul occurred in the end zone by rule the ball is placed at the two yard line first down. And here's another great look. And you see he was actually grabbing his arm as he was trailing and then got into it. And what they're calling was the, tra the grabbing of the arm while trailing and then putting your hand in his face without being able to see that ball. So a full house pistol, but Oregon does not allow Coppridge to get the end zone. Yeah, Jared Ebert was Ooh. all over that ball. Now, we're, we're into the the two and three deep that they all get to play a lot, not only because of situations like this, but also because as we talk, Nick Aliotti likes to run them in shifts. These guys are just dominate the line of scrimmage. They're, they reset the LOS backwards. Popperich on flying up there at Crayolamu denies. Popperich trying to use the wide side and get to the pylon. Now he couldn't outrun Brian Jackson, and so he had to try to come up, and, and a nice job by at Crayolamu of Closing ground. And a starter still out there on the Oregon defense. And on third down, California scores its first touchdown. Jeffrey Coppridge. Or Cal capitalizing on that turnover. And, and again, you talk about the young, all, all these teams, they have a lot of pride. Cal, Oregon, all playing hard. It's a, a big game right. It's a big spread right now in this field on this uh, score. 
but both sides fighting, and that's a nice job by that O line of Cal to push and get that line of scrimmage move back. Jeffrey Coprich, a defensive back when he came to Cal, was DB last year in his redshirt year, moved to running back this year, and gets his first touchdown. And for California, their first touchdown as they try to build on something what has been a long, wet night recent going backwards and the colors represent each game and the yellow ones are when Oregon won and the other colors are when the other team won and we see the last time that Cal won here at Oregon was in 2007. We see that right there and the Oregon alums who work for Nike came up with this idea for the stakes and they helped design them and they're pretty much brand new. They were put here this summer right before the season Ted. All right as we start the fourth quarter. Tyner with a big run gets out near midfield for Oregon. And there's so many new things like those stakes around here, but the biggest, newest thing of all, where we, where we had our first chance to go yesterday, was the new football operations center, which is, and, and if you're watching us, you've heard about it, I know, and you've probably seen some video online of it on Pac12.com. It's phenomenal. Nicer and more complete than you can imagine when you're watching it on your computer or on TV. Here's the occupational hazard of a night like this. In a game like this, you don't want anybody to go down. Michael Lowe, junior safety for Cal. All I know is we walked into Mark Helfrich's office, and I immediately said to him, I can, I can see why you, there's no way you could coach here no more than 40 years. <laughs> I mean, what a spectacular. Oh. And, uh, and everybody on the Oregon side, very open talking about the immense amount of thought that went in to designing everything in that building to make it functional, comfortable. I'd have taken one of those screens. What, there were 65 of them, I think? They were rather. The I would just yeah. take one. Yeah. I'd be happy with one. And that nice cafeteria, boy, they had it going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oregon now is just doing uh, what they can to get us close to running time, which at this juncture would, would not be the worst thing. And it's, they're just letting as much of the clock milk now before they snap the ball. Tyner gets a handoff. So what you start to see in Oregon when you're this good, it is a luxury, Glenn, because you get to have your nexts play and get a decent amount of play to your nexts. And, and that's, you know, what is the reason they love bowls? Coaches love bowls because you get an extra month of practice with all your youngest guys so that you're ahead come spring when the seniors are gone. Oregon gets that, and teams that are this good get that every game of the season, and it perpetuates itself year after year after year. Anthony Thomas winds up not playing. Byron Marshall plays, and now Tyner, next in line behind Marshall, gets a decent amount of action. The quarterbacks are playing because maybe we have a flag down against Oregon, a bad block on that run. But as, as, as much as nobody on the Oregon side understandably wants to address it now, it's reality. As you see De'Anthony Thomas out, Marcus Mariota would be draft eligible after this year. It'll be his decision to make. So at the same point, if you're Oregon, you have to understand we need to we need to know who our next are. That's right. Who, who are those the guys that are going to step up? Well, they found two of them tonight. Uh, Thomas Tanner and Byron Marshall both have career best days today with Anthony Thomas being down. Yeah, now your quarterbacks are not going to have your backup quarterbacks throw in this kind of situation. But you get them out there and get the game action. Yeah. That was a good stat. I got that from Ale. <laughs> We've got good people working here. Time out. Or yep. About 45 minutes away from Voodoo Donuts, I think. <laughs> Ever tuition.com. No purchase necessary. Always one of a kind. Uh, 
Uh, there, that's in the lobby of the football building. Uh, it's a visual display of the evolution of Oregon's football unis, and I would just die to see Glenn Parker in all white, baby. You know, you that'd have been awesome. Well, you see that area? That's why I don't wear white, because it, it tends to distort that area on me somehow. It makes it look bigger. And just think, in, in Buffalo, that would have been camouflage in oh. December. That uniform. I hated the white unis, man. Tony Dungy, his face on that card. His son is a wide receiver on this team, Eric Dungy. Another play by DeAndre Coleman there. Kenny Bassett now in the game as a running back, so Oregon getting everybody in, getting everybody some snaps. Actually, that might have been Todd Barr, pardon me. Come in. So a long third down. Once again, Rodriguez just looking over to the sideline, but everybody taking their time to signal the play in. Oregon very content to play at a slower pace now. Just run the clock is passing. He's piled up with the fourth down. I, I was here last year, early in the season for a game, and remember then coach Chip Kelly very gently instructing me on the ludicrous nature of time of possession. And that I would not certainly be foolish enough to think that was a legitimate stat. So tonight, as we speak, Arizona State leads USC 48 to 34. Arizona State has 48 points tonight. They've possessed the ball for 19 minutes. Yeah. They have 48 points. I have a, uh, so Coach Kelly is smiling right now. There you go. Now it, also, it would also depend on the style of offense you run. A team like Stanford, of course, values time of possession. Catch there, nicely done by Treggs off the pump. Oregon's average touchdown drive tonight, one minute and 41 seconds. We were married and came on the road in bad weather doing that. Uh, turnover night. Oregon ends up only turning the ball over once to this point as Copperich is dropped by Joe Walker in space. One of the other Marcus Mariota facts now 175 consecutive pass attempts without a pick. That speaks to how rarely they're forced to pass, how often they're, they're dictating the turn. Oh, wow, that was. That's called putting your receiver in a bad spot. Yeah, that ball had wow. to travel a long distance. There was no lead, block. there was no block on the edge. This one right at us. Look at that camera work. Dior Mathis blasting through there. Third and 11 for California. And Klein throws a good ball in there, and that looks to be a first down game. Kenny Lawler. I think he catch. might be short by oh, a yeah. yard. And and that that is your that's your your wide receiver there. Lawler, he's a redshirt freshman, he's young. He just doesn't run it deep enough. He's got to get one more yard. So Cal does get it. Copperich on a run. So Cal's had three different backs tonight carry 10 to 10 plus times. Lasco's at 13 carries, Bigelow 11, and now Copperich 10. But you know, this is again where Oregon went. He sits, sits pretty. They have the depth to do this. Nick Alioli's played 23 guys tonight on defense. I would, yeah. There's, and he's got guys that, that, sometimes play a lot, and now he's getting guys that hardly ever play a chance, and they're gonna just get better with that those reps. Troy Hill on the cover there against Lawler of Cal, and think how fresh those your starters will be for next week. A half a game of rest, but they don't have to put their bodies out there. 
Nick's still coaching him up, you see that? Still fired up in there. And so, you know, Oregon staff, I think, it may surprise a lot of people because they've got continuity. I mean, you think about it, everything's come from within. Mike Bellotti was promoted from within to replace Rich Brooks. Chip Kelly from within. Mark Helfrich from within. Other assistants, you were recruited by Steve Greenwood. That's right. He was the offensive line coach here yeah. and recruited me here back in the late 80s. And he's still on the Oregon staff. <laughs> Nine and a half to play, Oregon. This possession will start at its 13. Saturday. We're on SC in the fourth. Back to Ted and Glenn. I have to say, Ashley, I think we're a little bit caught by that one. I didn't think anybody was going to hang 55 up on USC's defense. Yeah, it, that, and now, of course, they've had a defensive touchdown, but right. that is still a lot of points on that good defense. Jeff Lockie back in as the Oregon quarterback and a fumble. As the ball was jarred from Bassett, the running back, and covered by Oregon. This is the first time tonight that Oregon has possessed the ball inside its own 20. Okay. Good hustle by Johnny Munn. That true freshman tight end hustles and jumps on that ball. By the way, those two teams that are playing that game at Tempe tonight are the two teams that Oregon does not play this year. to make that result tonight to make things tough on USC. That'll be two losses for them already. Conference play. Well, don't believe the turnover margin is the most direct correlator to success. There you go. And, and the reason it's since 2011, just since it's the Pac-12, so yeah. since it's been in existence. Yeah, that bottom one. Plus three or better, you're going to win a lot of ball games. Tonight, Oregon is plus three. This Oregon had been turned over three in its first three games. Two fumbles tonight. Cal has had four fumbles and a pick. So third down coming up. Or excuse me, fourth down coming up for Oregon. After Bassett's carry, they'll bring their punt team out. Two great Oregon running backs here tonight, Michael James. Michael James comes back to just about every Oregon game he can his second year since leaving here. And Kenyon Barner, who had over 1,700 yards here last year, now playing with Carolina. He is also here tonight. Have a drive start just inside their own 40-yard line. Well, tonight, just the fourth player in the history of the conference to have two punt returns in the same game for a touchdown. Uh, what a job it was. Uh, uh, the first one is that typical punt return, set it up and go. But the second one was a lot of improv and a lot of guys hustling to make plays down the field to help them out. Really fun to watch. Really, Madison. Holy smokes, been a long way. And so California hands the ball here to Daniel Lasco, and he runs it out. Nicely gets it out near midfield. Now for Cal tonight, their first road game, the first road game for Jared Goff, their freshman quarterback. And the first quarter was played in a near monsoon, and it was not a good quarter for Cal in any way, and Goff was taken out before the end of the first quarter after three turnovers. Zach Klein is quarterback since his first game as a Golden Bear. Bigelow cut down there as he tried to cross the Oregon formation. Those shaped John Moore flying out. Mm -hmm. 
Jason O'Shea, Oregonian, Mountain Newport, Oregon. Bigelow on the carry down to the 40 yard line. So Cal's going to mm -hmm. move to 200 plays, although we were on a, the famous word pace after the first quarter. Line ran up, handed the ball to Bigelow. And Bigelow does a good job. He's, he couldn't get outside, but then he managed to slither himself just inside a tackler to get a California first down. catch here so the two top teams right now in the conference both playing tonight Stanford has just finished in Seattle they put 55 on the board beating Washington State both defenses that were pretty good Washington State and USC giving up a lot of points tonight flag down Well, Oregon says they have the ball, but let's see what the penalty is. I don't think they got the guy out of the field. substitution on the defense. The 12th player did not get off the field. That's a five-yard penalty, which will result in a first down. All right, so California keeps the ball. Four minutes and change away from a wrap-up of our Saturday of college football here on Pac-12 Networks with Mike, Rick, Curtis, and Jake in our State Farm post-game report. <laughs> Stories tonight, one-sided wins for Stanford and for Oregon, and a jolt in Tempe where Arizona State has just scored again. They have 62 on the board. Wow, that's hard to believe. Well, it, it, up tempo, and they can get after you. We've, we've seen that in some of their other games. Now the question becomes for USC, how do you rebound? How do you recover from that one? Yeah, because the, that was the exact question tonight for Arizona State. They were hammered by Stanford last week. They, they've answered tonight. First and goal now for Cal. Bigelow with no free roam there. Free roam there. He's dropped. Okay, we'll have Oregon next Saturday. Once again, on Pac-12 Networks in Boulder. Cody Carragher is the player that made that last tackle for Oregon. And Klein throws inside and slithering his way free and scoring a California touchdown is James Grissom. Well, they, they, Oregon did a nice job of, of defending this screen. The rhythm got off, but I'll tell you, nice job by Klein of moving forward and out to set up the throw. So pretty well defended and then just really nice adjustment by Cal to get that ball out of the quarterback's hand and into the end zone. Zach Klein getting some congratulations. That was his first touchdown pass as a college quarterback. And even though it's a lost night for the team, he can have a little smile himself on that milestone moment. Got to feel good for him. And you see, there's the perfect example. Quarterback, he's got a feel-good moment for himself. Those offensive linemen are not feeling good. <laughs> they, there's nothing. I mean, they I mean, they feel good that they helped out and got a touchdown, but they get nothing. It's it's a uh, it's a it's a dynamic <laughs> out there that unless you are an offensive lineman, you can't understand the despair that goes on. We like to complain. It's just who we are. And yeah, and, and quarterback. You know, look at them. The blocking. It's a little quick screen. Quarterback doesn't. That's what I love. I love that. Move by Klein there. And he gets the first touchdown of his career. So 
you know, in a conference game, there's a limit. I believe it's 70 that you travel. So is Cal, I think Cal has enough here tonight. They could sub every offensive lineman, right? Uh -huh, and they, I, I think they could. I think they have subbed quite a few as already. I've seen uh, quite a few in there. So, you know, when you watch professional football, on those rare professional games, they get one-sided. The offensive lineman can't come out. <laughs> there, aren't, there aren't any subs to rest. Nowhere to go. That's when I feel your pain on, on games like that. Yeah. And I've been there. Right, another out of bounds kickoff. Kickoff, out of bounds, kicking team, balls placed, 35 yard line, first down. That'll drive a coach to distraction right there. All of these balls being kicked out of bounds. I guess if you're afraid of the return man, maybe, but. Yeah. You know, the odd thing about, well, an odd thing about this game will be when you look down at the Oregon, and I say this cautiously, only 383 yards of offense. <laughs> Turnover battle and starting field position, probably a... Yeah, they have 142 yards of punt returns, as go. Sam points out. Yes, that's, very, that's a good point. <laughs> But the second half for Oregon has been this. They're pretty much handing the ball off. Darren Irvin on that carry. They've only thrown one pass in this game since early in the third quarter. So everything of Saturday and Saturday night. A nice Saturday night. Three Pac-12 games going on all here in prime time. And it's recap coming up in just a few moments in the State Farm postgame report. <laughs> Jake Rodriguez back in on this series as the quarterback. So Rodriguez and Lockie have split most of the second half snaps. Lane Roseberry on that carry for Oregon. And a full house to start, but on a on a night game. Well, it's 57,000 here, but a, a night game where people come from long distances, then with the brutal weather. I, I can't, I would love to hear an Oregon historian tell me the last time they played a half of football here with as few people that were here for the second half. Of course, the one sided nature of the game contributes. And there's tonight's victory stake that's ready to. <laughs> The Duck wouldn't be able to have anybody help him. There's only about a thousand people left here at Autzen right now. But the band plays. Yes. They do not get a hall pass. No. The band stays. The band stays. <laughs> and the cheerleaders stay. There's still some students out there. Yeah, there, there are a few. <laughs> back to almost the goal line. That'll help your that's average. The, yeah, that's the green punter's bounce. He, he had that ball hit right. So about 35, 38 in the air, another 25 on the ground. 63 net on the punt. We were here for the spring game on Pac-12 Networks. When there had to be what? 25,000 maybe here for the spring game. At they least, They didn't yeah. open up all the stadium. They were doing some construction. One half of the stadium was packed. And so California running what should be the final play of the game right there. Handing the ball up to Coprich. Well, Cal signaling here. Looks like they're going to keep going here, Zach Klein. Thrown 37 passes tonight. And Sonny Dykes, of course, after the game, will certainly address the quarterback situation. Jared Goff, after a 
headline grabbing start to his college career. Three 400 yard plus pass games all at home. Did not finish the first quarter tonight. No injury involved, just lifted after he was scuffling and struggling to hold the ball, struggling with the weather, with the atmosphere, with the opponent. It'll be interesting to see where Sonny Dykes goes with this quarterback situation from here on out. Yeah. That's the, uh, the immediate story for California in the aftermath. So two first-year coaches. And Mark Helfrich wishing Sonny Dykes the best. Marcus Mariota threw for two touchdowns, ran for one. Did not have a, a numbers night. But Oregon had the numbers. And let's hear about from the Oregon side now as we go down to Drea. Thanks, Ted. Coach, four straight 50-plus point games. What message is your team sending to the college football landscape tonight? I have no idea. Um, you know, we, we, played, we played well at the beginning. Our defense played lights out, uh, turning the ball over, what was it, five times in the first half. And we didn't finish like we would like to, but uh, you know, certainly, certainly stuff to build on for the future. What did you think of the way Byron Marshall stepped in and shouldered the load on the ground tonight? Yeah, he had a little, uh, you know, little, little drop sees there early, but uh, really rallied well, and that says a lot about him and, and, and stepping up in that role, and we've seen him do it before, so we expect it again. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Best of luck next week. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. Well, Byron Marshall did run for 130 yards tonight. It was a bizarre night because his coach was charitably saying he had a hard time holding the ball early, but he ran for 130. Oregon ran for 264. And the Ducks cruise their fourth straight 50-plus point game to open the season. And we'll see them next Saturday once again here on Pac-12 Networks in Boulder. Now for Glenn and Drea and our entire crew, I'm Ted Robinson.